Capernaum. Okay? But then there were two other cities. One is called Chorazim. It's right up here on the hill to our right. And the other one is Bethsaida. It says there, if if anybody, if they would have seen the mighty work that I have been done in them, they would have repented long ago. But they did not. All three of them did not. And Jesus said that they will all be destroyed because they did not repent. And of course that's what happened in the year 70, 60, actually 68, 60, between 66 and 68 AD, that's when the Romans destroyed okay, completely every city and town here in Galilee. that in Matthew 11.
up here on the top of the hill. Most of the city is on the other side of the hill. It's called Safet. It's became a very, it's one of the important cities for Jews because of the rabbis who have lived there in the 15th, 16th century. And that's where Jewish Kabbalah was, became very popular in that city. Kabbalah is, is what we call the mysticism or numerology of the Bible. And that was very, that a lot of the rabbis from that city were involved with that. to now is Rosh Pina. Rosh Pina is again a place that the Rothschild family, they were the ones who built those houses. I would lay a headstone in Zion, it says in Isaiah. Solomon had fortified. 
he did the same thing about that city up here. See the city up there? The, you can always recognize the tail because it has a flat top. See? It doesn't look like just like another mountain. It has a, the tails have a flat top. So he, he fortified that city. But before that, we get the story about Joshua when he liberated this part of the country. He fought here against the, the Canaanites and he burnt the city of Hazor. That was the biggest city in northern Israel. And yesterday when we spoke about Mount Tabor and spoke about Barak and Deborah that fought against Sisera, he was from, Sisera was from Hazor when he came to fight against Israel at the Valley of Jezreel at, at the foot of Mount Tabor. So the city was liberated, but it wasn't settled. So what happens when you don't settle, they come back. And that's exactly what happened. So the Canaanites came back and, re, and resettled that city. So that's why the Israelites had to, and they became, that was the largest and most important city in northern Israel, Hatzor. So only during the Solomonic period, he, he did uh, build it and fortified it. Same like with the, what he did about Megiddo. And again, the reason for that is that it's on the Via Maris, that highway. This has been the big highway that comes down from the city of Damascus. So you see the tail again. If you look over oh, to the right beautiful. now, see we build this new highway out here. We used to drive nearby, but now they build a new highway, so we don't have to do that anymore. But that's where that those trees are. That's the tail. Hatsor. Europe 
to open banks all over the country, in every Paris, in Vienna, in Amsterdam, in, in London, and the headquarters was in Germany, Frankfurt. That's where their family was actually from. They were the ones who invented the stock market. did in such a short time developing that land so quickly that drove them met them mad so all they wanted is to destroy that so it was this was the most dangerous place to live in Israel up till the Six Day War and the high grounds were in control by the Syrians they would shoot well at that time it was they didn't have rockets but they had Crazy after yeah, this city was hit a lot by rockets. In 1982, Israel invaded Lebanon after an attack on that city. And we occupied South Lebanon till 2001. Then we pulled out of Lebanon, and it looks like we have to do it again. We have to go back in there because they, uh, Hezbollah, which is the organization that is in control of South Lebanon, they getting, they have now thousands of rockets from uh, Iran. There might be a situation that Israel will have to go back and take South Lebanon. So far, by the Shiite, see, Lebanon is the only <coughs> Arab country in this part of the world that is Shiite, the same kind of uh, Islamic religion like Iran. They have a big community of Shiites, especially out here. They are the followers of Ali, and uh, that's this guy that Nasrallah. He's the one who is their leader. See him sometimes on television. He's in the bunker, afraid that we're going to kill him. We, he's number one wanted by Israel. <laughs> he, yeah, they, they, I don't think. I think they let him stay in that bunker for. He's already there for three years what's going to happen. I would have never done that. <laughs> Too late, baby. <laughs> you never thought that we will destroy completely every building and every house in that part of Beirut.
No, that's the only language. Talk to them in, in their language. And they know. And since then, it's been quiet, really. Out of trees in this country. Yeah. Got some right there. Where, where do you see avocado? The media, right up there. No, no, that's uh, papaya. Papaya. Oh, yeah. Papaya. 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 Growing on that roof, or not, papaya. that is a, just a that's good too. net over it. See, you go up to Metula, if you have, you still have your maps that I gave you, or you, you sold them? <laughs> <laughs> we got them. Okay, so if you go, would have gone straight on this highway, another five, six miles, we would be up in the border. It's five miles. That would take us to the Lebanese border. We're building a wall now along the Lebanese border. That was a good joke, wasn't it? Yeah. That was the best joke that Trump ever said when he said they're going to pay for it. <laughs> well, the drug dealers could do that. He didn't they could say pay directly, for that. though. Yeah. Yeah, we have built a wall along the Gaza Strip now. We built a wall along the West Bank, and now we're building the wall up here, near the Lebanese border. Yeah. But now we go down 100 feet with that wall. Yeah.
Sea of Galilee. That's by the way where the word Jordan comes from. The Dan is descending. That's the meaning of the word Jordan. The Dan is a spring, but it's named after the tribe. Okay, when the tribe of Dan moved up here to this uh, territory after the Philistines occupied their their land, they came down up here and settled here. In in here, in the book of uh, Judges. chapter of the book of Judges said the, Danai the Danites settled in Laish. That was the name of the city before the people of the tribe of Dan settled there. So we have the whole story, how they came and chose that place and and uh, settled there in, in this place. And this is a good place because it has the water. That's where later on in the in first book, in first Kings, we've been reading about King Jeroboam. After Solomon's death, you know, Israel was separated between Israel and Judah, northern kingdom and southern kingdom. And the northern kingdom, they built a, a place for worship, uh, for worship, one in Dan and one in Beersheba. Uh, one in Dan and one in Bethel, sorry, when the people of the northern kingdom could not go anymore to Jerusalem. So that happened here at uh, at uh, Tel Dan. They even found the remains of that temple that was built here by Jeroboam. About uh, King Jeroboam, he said to his people, and the king made two golden cows. He said to the people, it is too much for you to go up to Jerusalem. Here are your gods, Israel, who brought you out of Egypt. One he said at Bethel and the other one in Dan. The people came to worship one at Bethel and went as far as Dan to worship there. It was, uh, that's in 1 Kings chapter 12. You can read verse 25 to the end of the chapter. So that is what King, that was after the separation between, it, when the northern kingdom was got separated from the southern kingdom. Thank you. So we have that also here. So it's a beautiful site. It's a nature reserve. What we're going to do is, I'm going to stop first, let you use the restrooms, and then we're going to walk for 10 minutes. See the water? It's beautiful. And then we're going to be back, and then I'm going to see if they will let me, op uh, let me, uh, let me, let's open the other gate and see if they can see the Abrahamic gate. That's the oldest gate that we have in this country. It's older than Bill Gates. guys we are going to our next uh, place now which is very important the city of Caesarea Philippi the other day we were at Caesarea Maritime this time we go to Caesarea that was named also after Caesar Augustus but the one who built it happened to be the son of Herod 
Philip, so he added his name to it to distinguish it from the other Caesarea. So Philip is the one who built it, and that's where it became known as Caesarea Philippi or Philippi, okay? Jesus, this was a pagan city that was built uh, and dedicated to the god Pan. The god, you know, that was half a goat. He was playing the flute. And they used to worship him up here at this place. And they used to, to uh, when they used to worship the god Pan, they used to scream and shout when they used to throw babies into the water from the top of the of the rock there. That's where you get, by the way, the English word panic from, from pen, okay? So they were, they used to panic when they used to worship the god pen, scream and shout. But we come here not because of the god pen, we come here because this is where Jesus asked the disciples who the men say the son of man is, and it was Peter who answered, he made his confession when he said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. So this is what makes this place so important. Jesus did that in a pagan city, you see? In the last place you would even expect him to do that. He did it right here, when he brought them all the way up to this place. So that's where we are, Caesarea Philippi. still have the remains of the worship place to the god Pan up there and the cave, the Pan cave is still up there and this is also the third spring that we get the water to the Jordan River it's not far. okay we're going to read scripture here and then I give you a few minutes time to walk over to see the the, the water used to come out where the cave is now, but there was a big earthquake here in 749 AD, and that's when the water, now it's coming out from another place. You know, I'll show you where it's coming out from. that the transfiguration story happened here in Matthew 17 he took three who he took with him Peter, John and who was the third one After six days, Jesus took with him Peter, James, and John, the brother of James, okay, and led them up to a high mountain by themselves. So because it says high mountain, many believe that is the one, because that's the highest mountain in the country. All the rest, I mean, like when the first Christians came, they thought it was Mount Tabor, but it isn't really a high mountain. This is the place that they would sacrifice their babies, their children. They would throw them.
need something at the Druze. There's a Druze place here. Druze is the same people that we saw, that we drove through their houses the day we went up to Mount Carmel. Okay? Those people with a secret religion. They don't know anything about their religion. That's good for them. Well, they say it's secret. You know, that solved the problem. You talk to them, say it was secret. We can't talk about it. Now, only 2% of the Druze actually study and know their religion. They don't have a worship place like we have synagogues or you have churches or mosques even for Muslims. They don't have anything like that.